Welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY, where crafting and mental health come together. In today's DIY video, how to get a high-end home decor look with less dollars. Dollar Tree DIYs. Welcome back, my DIY-loving friends, and hello to my new DIY-loving friends. Are you ready to transform your home decor on a Dollar Tree budget? Well, you're in luck because that's what this video is all about. Get ready to transform your space with these trendy and super affordable home decor DIYs. You don't need to be a DIY expert, and you all know that I am not, for these simple and quick DIYs to inspire you to create your own stylish home decor. Get comfy and let's go DIY together. So stick around, let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. For this DIY, to begin with, I am using these two rectangle wood pieces from Dollar Tree, as well as 36 total tumbling tower blocks, also from Dollar Tree. And I'm using super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree to glue together first four sets of two blocks, and they are glued end to end. So that's four sets of these two block sets. Next, I'm gluing together four sets of three blocks, and these are also glued end to end. Then I'm going to make a total of eight sets of two blocks, but this time they are one on top of another like little sandwiches, and we're making eight of those. I then realized my four sets of two blocks were just a smidge too long to fit on the wood rectangle end, so I marked where to cut them with a pencil, used my miter shears from Amazon, which I will link for you in the description box below. I used the shears to cut all four sets of the two blocks to a size that would match the wood rectangle ends, as you can see right here. I'm using Folk Art Antique Wax, which I will link for you below, and I'm going to paint all the sides and the edges of both wood rectangles using a dry paper towel to rub off the excess wax. We are not painting any of the tumbling tower blocks. Instead, we will be using some jute twine, which you can get at Dollar Tree, and we will be wrapping all the blocks with the jute. We're securing the jute with some hot glue as we wrap the blocks. I started with wrapping all of the sandwiched blocks, so we're doing eight sets of those, and we're wrapping all eight sets. Then I move on to wrapping the four sets of two blocks that we trimmed down with the miter shears, but first, the ends of these sets of two will be visible on the project. So first we have to cover the ends with jute before wrapping the two block sets. And the easiest way to do this was to simply glue shorter pieces of jute next to each other on the ends of those sets on both sides, and then trimming the excess jute and gluing those sides down so that we can begin wrapping more jute right over them. And this way, none of the wood on the blocks is going to be visible. Hopefully that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, just you could slow down the video or you could pause it to see exactly what it is that I did there. I then simply continue to wrap the two block sets right over the jute covered ends and we're going to wrap them the same way as we wrapped the sandwich sets before them. Then we wrap the four sets of three blocks, and we don't need to worry about covering the ends on these because they will not be seen, so we just wrap them the regular way, from one side to the other. I'm using Folk Art Acrylic Paint in the color Camel, which I will link for you below, and a dry brush, and I'm just going to do a light kind of distress painting with the camel over the tops and the edges of both of the wood rectangles, just to beat them up a little bit. I take one of the wood rectangles and I turn it upside down and I'm using wood glue to glue one sandwiched set of the blocks onto all four corners of the rectangle. Then I use some hot glue and I glue one of the two block sets with the ends that are covered in jute directly on top of two of the sandwich sets on both sides of that rectangle. These are going to be the feet at the bottom of my project. With the remaining four sandwich sets and the remaining two two block sets, I repeat this process, but without gluing them to the second rectangle, these are going to be the two handles at the top of my project. And then I glue those two handles onto the top of the second rectangle on either side. I turn the rectangle with the feet over and I am going to glue one of each of the four sets of three blocks 
onto the four corners of the top of that rectangle. I did use a little hot glue along with the wood glue to help these very long block sets stay in place and stand up. And lastly, I used wood glue to attach that second rectangle with the handles on top of those four tall legs. And this is my Jenga block mini shelf, and I really like the way this turned out. I love the look of the blocks wrapped in jute. It really elevates the shelf to the next level. And this shelf is stable enough to place light things like a candle or a small plant or a dish on it. And I just really love the final look. This next DIY starts with six wood rings, and you can buy these at Dollar Tree, but I will link the ones that I'm using below. I'm also using this leftover wood handle from an old foam brush, and you guys know I always save these. They can come in handy for lots of projects. I'm painting both the brush handle and all the rings with a mixture of antique wax and water, using a paper towel to rub off the excess wax and water. I had this large wood circle already painted the same color from a previous project, and you can find similar circles at Dollar Tree. I did find this one at Walmart. I also painted this tiny wood circle the same color, and I will link the one inch wood circles for you below. I grabbed one of those long zip ties from Dollar Tree, and I strung these six wood rings onto the zip tie. Then I slowly tightened that zip tie while shaping the wood rings into the position that I wanted them, which was in a circle and standing up on their own. Before I finished tightening the zip tie, I stuck the wood brush handle down into the middle of all of those wood rings so that it was standing straight up, and I finished out the zip tie. I'm using Starbond Super Glue, which I will link for you below, and I dropped a couple of drops down between the rings and the wood brush handle, and I gave it some time to fully dry. I am not going to remove the zip tie because it really does keep that design secure and intact. But just because I'm not removing the zip tie, it doesn't mean I want anyone to see it. So we are covering it up with this thick jute, which I will link for you below, but you could also use the Dollar Tree smaller nautical rope for this. Um, I use hot glue to attach that thick jute and I wrap it around the inside of the rings three times so that that zip tie is no longer visible. I had one of these tiny wood rings, which I will link for you below, already painted from another project, so I decided to just drop that down around the top of the brush handle to further camouflage all the super glue and the zip tie. I also decided to use this three inch wood circle, which I will also link for you below, and I also was already painted from another project, so I basically took apart a project from last week. Then I used some super glue to attach the tiny one inch circle to the middle of that three inch circle. Then I attached the three inch circle to the bottom of my large wood circle. And with that, all that was left to do was to attach the bottom of the large wood circle to the wood handle base, gluing it to that tiny wood circle on the bottom. And this is my wood ring riser. And I literally love this riser, you guys. It is just so cool looking. And it just might be my favorite project. It's really unique and visually interesting. And I've never really seen anything like it, but I'd love it as a full size table, wouldn't you? I just love a round table. This next DIY begins with this square glass candle holder from Dollar Tree and this large pack of craft paper straws that I got on Amazon, and I'll link it for you below. I really liked these straws because they were really inexpensive and they look a little bit like bamboo or wood, so I knew I could use them in some projects. I grabbed a bunch of them. I really don't know exactly how many, and I cut them in half. I always knew I could cut more if I needed more. It depends on the size of the vase or candle holder that you use. I used some hot glue to attach the straws one by one around the entire candle holder until it was all covered with straws. I was going to trim the tops of the straws to the same height, but I kind of like them all different and random looking. So I'm using a dry chip brush and I lightly paint the straws with some antique wax, making sure to get a little wax along the top edges of the straws to emphasize them. And the more wax I used, the more the straws start to look like bamboo to me. I have this self-adhesive faux leather, which I'll link for you below, but you could also use Dollar Tree faux leather for this. The way I use this is because it's like tape, I put a piece on parchment paper, then I fold it to the width I want and remove the parchment paper and then fold the tape over onto itself so that it looks like a leather strap. I trim the white edges off so that all you will see is this leather strap that I created. I use a little hot glue and I wrap the leather strap around the middle of my straw covered candle holder. And that is really all there is to this DIY. 
And this is my faux bamboo vase. I think the fact that this is made out of paper straws is really impressive. And I love it as a, vi as a vase for small plants or succulents. You could use a battery operated candle in it, but I would not recommend an actual candle since it is paper. But I love the way it looks with some greenery or some flowers. This next DIY begins with these one inch wood circles I got on Amazon and I will link them for you below. I painted 15 of them with some antique wax and I use a paper towel to wipe away the excess wax. Next, I have this large glass vase from Dollar Tree and some nautical rope also from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use some hot glue to wrap the nautical rope around the bottom of the vase three times. Next, I take the painted wood circles and I want to attach them around the vase in no particular pattern. I just want some a little higher, some a little lower. I use hot glue to attach them and I also only want them to go up about two thirds of the way up the, the vase, not to the top. I also don't want the wood circles too close to the nautical rope on the bottom or too close to each other. Just spread out and kind of random. Next, I take this thin jute twine and I am going to wrap the twine around each of my circles five times. I counted five times so that they will all end up being the same size. I use hot glue to secure the twine around the circles and at the end of the five wraps around, I cut that piece of twine, leaving plenty of excess twine hanging down and you'll see why later. I do this wrapping to all of the little wood circles around the whole vase. So all the circles are wrapped with twine and they have leftover twine hanging and I want to use that twine to connect all the circles somehow to one another. So I figure out what direction to go and I start gluing the excess twine to another wood, wood circle that's close by to it. And then I cut the excess twine after they are connected. Then I move on to another circle and I do the same thing until all of these circles are connected to at least one other circle. Again, no real pattern here. They're just kind of all randomly attached, if that makes sense. And hopefully that makes sense to you. And this is my wood circle candle holder or vase. I really just came up with this on the fly. I have wanted to use jute wrapped wood circles on glass somehow. And this is what I came up with. I really like it. It's different looking, but still has that rustic or boho kind of feel that I love. This DIY is using this faux wood charger plate I had in my stash, but they have similar ones at Dollar Tree. And I'm also using three of these wood snakes from Dollar Tree. I removed the heads and the tails from the snakes. Using a mixture of water, Craft Smart dark gray paint, some deco art raw umber, along with a tiny bit of folk art black chalk paint, I painted the three snakes with the mixture to try and get a brownish gray stained effect, wiping away the excess paint with a dry paper towel. And I have to ask, am I the only one who gets constantly pinched by these snakes while working with them? I don't understand why. Let me know in the comments if this ever happens to you too. It's like they're biting me or something. It's every single time. I was not thrilled with the color of the snakes, so I tried a little distressing with some of the dark gray color. And honestly, that didn't really help. So then I tried some deco art sand gray, which is much lighter, and that turned out almost too light. So uh, then I went and I distressed the snakes with some black chalk paint in order to darken them. And overall, I am just not thrilled with the snake color overall. I just have to be real with you. I was not happy with how they looked. But I was determined to see this through to the end and I used some hot glue to attach the snakes around the edge of the charger plate, trying my best to keep the snakes kind of straight and not wonky, but they were still wonky. I just don't even know what to say. It didn't go as planned. <laughs> and worse than them being wonky, the hot glue was super visible on the edge, so I covered that with some thick jute. I was just hoping something, anything would help. And it didn't really. I am showing this DIY faux wood platter, but you guys, I am not proud. It, it is what it is. I don't know if it's the colors. I don't know. I'm just, I'm at a loss. <laughs> I'm at a loss. And hopefully you won't hold that last one against me, but as usual, I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comments which one of these high-end home decor DIYs is your favorite and why. I really love hearing from you. And if you've enjoyed this DIY video, there is another one waiting for you. Just click that link in the upper right corner for more Medicated Housewife DIYs. 
Thanks for watching. Until next time, my name is Sarah. I'm the Medicated Housewife, and crafting is my medication.